Hey guys, what's up? It's me again. And it's been a while since I did a video, and I just had a lot, some personal things to take care of at the time. And I was just trying to figure out other video ideas to throw out, and then I couldn't find anything to come up with. So, I know it's music related, but, you know, I just have a hard time focusing on one thing. But... I figure, you know, since it's been a while, I figure I'd do the second half of of showing my dad's vinyls, you know. And, yeah. And with that in mind, uh, before I go any further, I just want to cut this short, intro short, and get to the point. So, the first one here is... Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. See, this is one of those Sabbath albums that, well, doesn't feel like a Sabbath album, considering there's no Ozzy. And at the time, when I was much younger, I just assumed, ah, uh, it's just not as good without Ozzy, you know. But I didn't really give it a chance to listen to, so I was being picky. So I thought, Ozzy's the only guy who could do Black Sabbath in. In a way, yeah, but, you know... It's about the musicianship of other members besides Ozzy. But, I realized, it's freaking James Dio. I mean, how can you not love that guy? I mean, that guy kicked butt in his own t on his own. And I, and I think about it, I'm like, you know, this was a pretty good album. Underrated, actually. It's different because you're used to hearing familiar vocals, but I think it's cool to hear Ronnie do his thing on this album. You got really good songs like Neon Nights, Walk Away, Heaven and Hell. You know, those are just the name those first couple of tracks and you know, you you just don't think of it as a traditional Sabbath album as I like to put it. It's more of a I like to put it like this near the end of Dio's life, like, he did his final tour with, I believe he did one more tour with Sabbath, but to avoid confusion from, and all that, to avoid getting mixed up, they decided to go with the name Heaven and Hell, because then, because if you think about it, with Dio, it's its own thing, so in reality, this is a Heaven and Hell type of band, Still Sabbath, but if you guys remember this, that like they did go on tour like in the early, late two thousands, I think. Almost in the twenty teens, I believe. Yeah, you, well, once you get past that, you know this is good. You know this is really good. And I don't think people should just be picky. If you like Dio, and you happen to like the musician. The music of Sabbath, you know, this is a good standalone album. And I think it should be seen as that. But if you want to hear Ozzy, you just listen to the the Ozzy years of Sabbath. But, yeah, they may make albums even after this, after not having Dio again. Yeah, it just went under the radar, pretty much, those albums, like in the 80s. Like, people forget about them. And I believe they had the vocalist from Deep Purple at one point, I believe. And yeah, I haven't heard those, so if it's that forgotten, so it either it's just not that good of a quality or great, or I just, at that point, Sabbath just seemed irrelevant for a while after that. But that's not really true, because... Ozzy was still kicking around after Sabbath, and look how well he did on his own. So he just shows you the guys are tr Ozzy and all, the whole, all the members of Sabbath. They're the innovators of metal in some form. They pretty much gave it that dark sound. You know, yeah, people may argue that metal starts started before it, and there's no denying that. It's just it was a genre that was in the making as throughout like from the late 60s up to the 70s but it hit its ultimate 
peak in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, there was glam metal and hair metal, which I'm not really a fan of. Never been crazy for that sort of style. I guess to me, that's not real metal to some extent. It's radio-friendly metal, as I like to call it. Yeah, there was a lot of songs about sex and drugs, and, you know, and just having a party, you know. And actually, it was just about partying and getting the girls, you know. The, the Sunset Strip type error. But was it really always fun? Hmm... If you, when you think about it, a lot of bands at the time, almost just about every band on that scene, were all junkies at this point, and drunks. But started out as just having a fun time, loosening up, turning into a full-blown addiction for these guys. And yeah, this shows you it's not, it's all, it's no longer fun in games when you realize you have a serious problem. But, and that includes Ozzy as well. But yeah, overall, this was like the more underrated standalone album. So I just call it Sabbath featuring Dio. That's okay. I mean, okay, so with that in mind, uh, the next album I have here is Leonard Skinner's first and last. See, I haven't heard this one before. I mean, I have other, another Skinner album, but I gotta find the vinyl part itself. But I do have this. I mean, I'm familiar with their more well-known albums. I mean, these are, these are pretty well-known, I gather, obviously. Just um, everyone thinks of Sweet Home Alabama or Tuesday's Gone, you know. Or the biggest one out of those, in my, I would say, is Freebird. Granted, you can't go wrong with that. Those are great songs. Especially Freebird. It's beautiful. It's just the guitar playing, the, the vocals, everything just goes so well together. Yeah, it's a long song, but that's what makes it epic. Like, it's just, they were really good back in the day. Yeah, they still kept going after the death of some of the original members, including the original vocalist, which is tragic. Unfortunate, but from what I heard, like they just stopped being good. Like, I don't know, maybe their later stuff just like in the later years with the brother taking over and other members. I don't know much about that era. It's like that era, I think, I guess some people rather than just not acknowledge. I don't know, and I can understand because the quality of, I'm gathering just wasn't there, like, like the original lineup. But then again, I could be very wrong. And I'm a huge music nerd. But this is some things I haven't... There's certain things I haven't really put too much effort in looking into. Which I should be ashamed of myself. But... It, it's... I, you know, this is a... You know, I gotta check this out. Because... I mean, with these... I mean, this is truly Southern Rock at its purest, like a lot of other Southern bands, but Skinner's the big one, I would say. Maybe there's others. I don't really know much about that style of rock as much. I mean, they, they, they do exist. Yeah, that and Kid Rock. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Screw Kid Rock. <laughs> Can't believe I actually used to like him as a kid, but I got older and realized those albums were not good. Anyway, that's a whole nother subject for another time when I get to that. But, yeah. I just gotta say it. Kid Rock or whatever, you're not creative, so stop trying to sample other songs and try to make it. It's just, even Leonard Skinner, that's a big no-no. Don't mess with Leonard Skinner's sound just for your own lack of creativity. And you are... You know, I'm not going to go into any further detail I was going to say. Because then if I say something, you know, then the negative responses come. And I really don't like to be negative when I do these videos. But, sorry, sorry about that, but... But yeah, I need to definitely check this out. Okay.
And yeah, it's a little damaged, of course, it's like 30-something years old, maybe older. It's gotta be like 40 years old. So to be fair, it's gonna look the way it does. Of course, that's common. Stone-worn. So anyway, uh... The next album here is... Ireland's own Thin Lizzy, Johnny the Fox. That's actually a really amazing cover. That's, I love the art on this cover. It's just, it's so in your face. It's like, it's like, it's really, it comes out of the picture, you know. This was... And for the, for those who probably heard whiskey in a jar, would probably might have heard the that might not know about the original. If you're a younger person, for that matter, of course, Thin Lizzy's music is pretty underrated. To be fair, the these guys were were one heck of a band. I mean, of course, we all know the boys are back in town. Whiskey in a jar, which is an old song before them but heck I gotta admit even if you don't like even if you're not a Metallica fan or just never care for them at all you probably might like their take on the song hey I don't mind Metallica but their later stuff just turned me off and just lost interest I don't know I wouldn't say I'm the biggest I like Metallica but I wouldn't just call myself a big honcho for their later stuff which is pretty common but yet then Lizzie we got that sorry if I'm not explaining things I just my my brain's just not not working today so please forgive me and this one uh, is I know this is it is Johnny Winter live this guy, wow. I, I believe this is... The st I, I think this is the same... Yeah, it's the same Johnny Winter, obviously, but... This is actually Happy Hippie's favorite artist. If he's watching, I'd be like, see? Got Johnny Winter for, for you to see. But, you know, I, there's people who like live albums, and there's people who just just be like, oh, who cares, who wants to buy a live album, when you can just hear it in the studio. I mean, it depends. I always feel, personally, like, live albums could be good with production. I haven't heard this one yet, but Johnny Winter, definitely that a legend. And, I don't know, it's just... Like, but like I was saying a lot about live albums, that live albums can be either good or you just feel meh. Like, it just sounds better in a studio album. But that depends how your production is in concert or how good you are in real life and not just behind the studio. But I, but there's been some good live ones, but I prefer studio albums personally. I always wanted to go to a concert, so I wish I could actually see a concert in person. The problem is, there ain't that much really capturing my eye right now, and I can't afford to spend a, a buttload full of cash to see a concert. You know, I, my dad was lucky, because he, at least he was alive when tickets were cheap, and, and people could just go see them. Now it's like you're going for hundreds and maybe 300 depend, depending what you're selling I mean I don't know I just feel like that's highway robbery to a lot of people who can't see bands in person or or musicians other singers and stuff I, one day I would just love to go to a concert of a good artist I like uh, something I like and it's hard to catch up on them and by the time I find out that they're in concert it's too late Either, chances are they were probably already past this place or by the time I get tickets which is barely any chance because 
I can't afford tickets right now. I got, but you know, one day though, one day I'll get a chance to see a good musician live, you know. Eh, it's never too late. <laughs> This one, the greatest heavy metal band of all time, according to the Grammys Choice of Metal Album of the Year, <laughs> you probably know, okay, what comes to your mind when you think of lutes and rock music? You get Jeff Rotol benefit these guys were good too I mean they, they, they're I mean it's just unique in my opinion this style and even has the old price sticker on it well look at that 399 from Pathmark Wow that's a relic right there. The nice price. Wow. I love that it still has its stickers and they, they got piece of history right there. But path mark, wow. Didn't think it was possible, but it, it shows you there was a time when records weren't that expensive. Like how they are now because their vinyl is back in business, so might as well price them a bit more. Especially remasters, but if you want to get a record, final record, for a good price, always check the cheap bins, or or just look online, like Discogs or Reverb LP. Like I haven't bought records off the, one of those sites, those apps yet. But oh, I'm gonna get a chance and try. And <laughs> so the next one is once again Grand Funk closer to home and I shown you other Grand Funk albums in the last time I did one of these videos and I figured let's show them again it just shows you that there's a lot more albums that my dad has of this band. Sorry, I'm smelling that. That's weird, but there's just something about aged record. It's it's weird. Like it has a distinctive smell of time. I know people are like, why would you smell a record? I don't know. It's just it's hard to explain. <laughs> it's it's. Then again, I'm weird that way. But, yeah, that's closer to Home by Grand Funk. So, that's another one mentioned. Like I, I, like I said, the reason I'm not getting too much in depth like last time, because, like I said, like I just want to try to make this short and get it out of the way. And just bang them out and just continue more in another video. And not last but not least, but I was kidding about the Jeff Roll Toll being metal, if you remember that infamous best metal album incident and Jeff Toll being picked, well here's a metal band that well it is a metal band. You might have seen you might have heard of this band, you know you know guys, you know Okay, it's not beating around the bush. The band I try to introduce in the most creative way, it's not working. That band would be none other than Maiden. Iron Maiden. Now, this is a... Th I, there ain't much to say about Iron Maiden. They're just great. And, of course, of Eddie being Eddie. Oh, God, I love that guy. This is, oh yeah, if you, know, you guys know what this album is, but it's Peace of Mind. I'm sorry. Call from 
Sorry about that. Some stupid, unnecessary call that's not relevant to me. Because well, that's scam likely, so don't answer it. <laughs> so I apologize about that. So, yeah, Iron Maiden, Bruce Dickinson. Th this is... There's nothing more I can say of how great and how awesome this band is. Like, they've been around forever. People will always know them for mostly because of Bruce Dickinson, because he was in the band the longest. Had more of a memorable run with them. Yeah, there's this, there was another singer before him, but that's become like obscure in the past. Nobody really rem they, people remember that guy. Obviously, it's just when people associate Iron Maiden, they think of this era of that band, this period uh, with Bruce Dickinson. And sorry if I'm just rambling on. I'm sorry. I just I am doing my best with this video. I'm just tired to be honest so that's another reason why I'm just so out of it but yeah that this is uh since I'm here I can try to look for the year I can't really see it that well it's small lettering and it lighting is a little dark ah there we go nineteen eighty three Wow. Good times. <laughs> and again, I wasn't alive then. I wasn't born till 91, but hey. Can we all believe that we came from that time period? <laughs> yeah, well, this one I gotta get around listening to, so that's another reason I can't say much of it. But overall, I'm familiar with Iron Maiden and their music. So... Okay, that's it. Um, like I said, I'm sorry if this video just felt eh, kind of not exciting or anything like that. It's like I said, I just, I, my brain just, just not going the way it should. And I don't know. I guess I feel like I I wanted to do this video that night, just couldn't bring my really kind of like was slacking on my videos but the next time I'll be more energized and I can give you a better video than this so I apologize to anyone who f feels like this video was underwhelming and didn't say much but, it, but overall you know always stick with your bat pals the VC the VC So, with that in mind, I'm Daniel, and if you're going to do a video, make sure you ha have, feel like you're more prepared. This one was just last minute decision. And, oh yeah, do your research too, if you're going to, and listen to some of these albums before you do videos like this. <laughs> so, you guys have a wonderful day, and peace out.